If you look at the uh, opening uh, session uh, yesterday, uh, starting with uh, Mr. Godridge's uh, speech, welcome address, and what he actually said there was that the country was faced by a number of challenges. One of the challenges which interestingly came about and he highlighted it in the speech was regarding skills development. And I think what he said was that while CIA is doing a lot of work in skills development and was enabling people and including people, there was a need to do more, faster and sustainably. This was addressed and was a theme in most, almost all the speeches uh, going forward. If you then saw the Prime Minister's response, he talked about the new architecture that is being developed to address skill development, the need for industry to get involved. He talked about the institutions and the systems that he is creating to actually increase economic growth and therefore provide a means of growth and involvement and inclusiveness to all the people in the country. What followed was very interesting. You know, if you looked at the uh, sessions uh, after that, immediately after that, there was a big discussion on skills by Anand Sharma. He talked about the new structure, how he supports the structure and how he thinks that the need for skill development is there and the industry has to play a role. It came out again in the telecom story when it was found that the telecom industry had expanded and had provided jobs and provided new skills to the people of India, but then it was, it was actually constrained by the whole economic framework. Then you had the session with the secretaries and the cabinet secretary. The cabinet secretary himself talked about the importance of skill and the issues of what we are trying to do and the, the, plan, the annual target of skilling 9 million people. And you had the, the Secretary of Higher Education, Ashok Thakur, talk about the challenge of skills. And you again heard it in Sam Petroda's speech. In fact, he talked about, in response to a question about vocational education, he talked about not having a brick and mortar university, but looking at a new paradigm, not using 19th century tools and 20th century curriculum to prepare for the 21st century. This morning, I think Rahul Gandhi came out very, very clearly and talked about a new compact. I think his thing about, you know, a pilot needing to know how to throw air mail outside the aircraft uh, typified that the industry and the employer was not involved in the, uh, in the area of skill development. And I think he summed up five key messages that actually came out of the uh, two days. One, industry needs to be involved. Two, industry needs to take leadership and systems and structures need to be built to enable the voice of not only industry but voice of the lowest common man at the village level to be heard. Getting the Pradhan to lead change and be part of the economic and the political system. When he talked about the need to meet the aspirations of people. His story about the carpenter and the Gorakhpur Express or the persons who actually moved to uh, learn or work in Bam Bombay and then not willing to actually get a job there, work in Bangalore was key. And his really focus on listening to people and creating inclusiveness was important. And then I think the final point that he uh, what, what actually uh, came out was that there is a new partnership uh, which is expected between industry and government and I think Rahul Gandhi called it the new compact that he, which he wants to form and he said that if this happens which will be the result would be that the power of India the soft touch of India would actually be able to get Indian industry to do well overseas and also to be a major economic power uh, around the world at the same time ensuring empowerment to the lowest level and inclusive and sustainable growth i think you know if you look at if you look at the challenge today right and if you heard the prime minister's speech uh, yesterday and the and the and the comments made um, by the ministers here there were multiple things that were coming out one that there were areas of policy that needed to be addressed whether you heard Mr. Adi Godrej talk about GST, the direct taxes code, or you know the other things like that. So there were some pieces of policy that needed to be uh, developed a consensus, consensus on. 
and execute, right? The second was that there was a lot of legislation uh, which was uh, stuck in parliament, which needed to go through parliament. You heard about the higher education bills, you heard about other bills which are, which are in there. And the third, which is the most important and what the Prime Minister tried to talk about yesterday uh, and explain to people was that we need to execute and ensure that the policies and processes in place actually work in a time-bound manner to enable the, whether it's the implementation of infrastructure projects, whether it's clearance of uh, projects stalled, or you know different things we need to be done in a time bound manner and if we all do it collectively and we are aligned to the outcomes we would actually transform the way Indian industry works in India. What we heard yesterday was the Prime Minister uh, actually talk about industry you know, taking part in skill development. So there are, through the NSDC and you heard Sam Petrura talk about it and the Cabinet Secretary talk about it, it is possible for industry to participate in the skill development efforts of the country in a variety of ways. The first is that if industry wants to enter into the skill development as a venture, which is something which NIIT or Aptec did in the IT space, they actually skill people for the IT industry. And these are profitable businesses. You could access, or industry could access, low-cost loans, development loans, and even a bit of equity from NSDC to set up skill development ventures. The second is, if industry is not willing to actually set up skill development ventures, they can partner with some NSDC partners. NSDC has approved really 82 training partners, and we'll do 60, another 60 in this year. These training partners would provide you with the exact qualified person that you're looking to employ in your company in anywhere in the country. NSCC partners are currently present in 325 districts. It will improve as we go forward. The third, and this is important, this is what Rahul Gandhi also spoke about uh, in his special address. Uh, it was talked about by Mr. Adi Godridge of the CII setting up five sector skill councils. This is an opportunity for industry to actually lead the formation of standards, the competency standards, the national occupation standards for all job roles in their sector by participating in the sector skill council and ensuring that the standards framed by the council are the highest common factor so that they then need to do three things. Industry going forward will say, that we will only hire people who are trained by training partners who get themselves certified by the Sector Skill Council. Second, and this is very important, that we agree to recognize skills and productivity by paying a higher wage to a person who's got certified by a Sector Skill Council. And over the next two or three years, all the people working in our sector, in our industry, we will get them certified and create career progressions for them going forward. And the fourth, this is very important. You tend to pay a placement fee or 12.5% of the annual salary of a person if he comes in a managerial process, uh, program. If you can do it for a worker who works on the shop floor or a security guard that you employ or a carpenter or a painter that you employ, can you reimburse one month's salary to the training organization who trains a person that you employ. And you can have your own caveat. You can say, I will only pay this one month salary if that person stays with me at least for three to four months. And if the person stays with you for one year, you will say that you will refund or give as an incentive to him the amount of money that he spent on training. You can actually create the whole system to be a sustainable, industry-led, industry-managed and industry and employer-oriented training system in the country which meets the requirements of your people today and also gives an avenue to you to send your existing people out to get them retrained. The final point is that industry could think of a new employment or employability or uh, skill uh, development uh, program where you call it an ESOP employee skill opportunity program where you get your best people working 
uh, in your companies to go and act as trainers, to act as assessors, to act as counselors to the training institutions uh, that exist near you. So if these five points and the sixth ESOP is actually taken up by industry, you could transform the whole way that the skill development is being done in the country and like it was said today, create a new compact between government and industry uh, to transform the skills landscape in the country. NSDC would be happy to partner and support individual companies, associations, groups of people, entrepreneurs, non-governmental organizations to take this forward. Thanks so much. Okay.